Oh my God, it's Crystal Bailey after trying over a dozen times to reach Indonesia. Matt LaHood was going to get on a boat from Bondi Beach <laughs> and come and interview you, Miss Bailey. <laughs> I go all the way over to Bali. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we just love to? Not a bad drop. thing to have to do. Oh hey, Crystal, my God. how are you? <laughs> Hey, hey, I know, it's, um, it's pretty crazy when we think about how technology keeps us all connected. Oh my goodness. And I've been following you on Instagram stories. I know you've been having a lot of dramas and trouble with your Wi-Fi over there. And, uh, I don't know, you, you might have to come. I know, I've literally, I've literally just arrived at the world's best beach club. So it's pretty much to think, okay, I get to work from this place today. <laughs> well, I think I'd rather go over there. Just just to put into perspective and context for you, in Bondi Beach, it's 30 degrees today. Uh, we're here at uh, HQ headquarters of the agency. Here. Yeah, so I'm, I'm glad I've brought my Speedos in the back of my car so I can go for a quick <laughs> swim afterwards. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, listen, hey, Crystal, welcome to episode number 38 of The Mentors. Um, it's a real pleasure and honour to have you on Um I've just got to tell the story to, uh, we've got Matt, we've got Clinton here as well, um, the third mentor. And um, I've, I've got to say, the only way I found you was actually through my wife. She'd been following you for a number of months and she went, you've got to check this gal out. And I went, okay, I'll, I'll start following her. And um, I've, I've been seeing your videos and uh, understanding your story. And, and, and I suppose for our listeners out there and we were also recording this on uh, today as well so this will be thrown in YouTube as well so some of the viewers will watch it um, probably can you give us a little bit of an insight of, of, of Crystal Bailey who is she we, we know you're an interior designer and stylist and you do some amazing work yeah. all over the world and the country so um, yeah fill us in give us give us the, yeah. the best bio of Crystal Bailey <laughs> Have you got three hours? <laughs> I'm joking. I actually told my story for the very first time about a year ago, and it took an hour and a half, and I'm like, I better condense this. <laughs> um, so condensed version, here we go. Um, so I grew up in a small country town of Hamworth, absolutely loved it. Um, but, you know, at the same time, as, as amazing as it was, it's not a space where you can grow and grow and grow. And my I was a little girl with big dreams and big visions. Yep. Um, and I knew I was going to make it happen. So I started playing country music with my brother and sister um, in a band there. And we ended up touring the world, actually. We, we wow. played with Keith Urban and Jeff Canal Boy. And we, yeah, it, it became quite big. We took Dwight Yoakam, who's an American singer. And I did that for a decade. And it was really amazing to have that upbringing where I played mandolin. And it, it's more about expressing myself creatively and really um, getting a different culture of just traveling and touring with my family. So it kind of set me up, you know, on a little entrepreneurial journey there. We signed to record deals and, and we did all of that. It was really fun. And so at the end of, you know, a decade, I did that for a decade, and I just thought to myself, look, what is my actual passion? What do I love doing? What am I excited to get out of bed and just wake up and do it? And it was always designed. So I thought, okay, I really have to make the decision here on whether I wanted to keep pursuing my musical journey or I wanted to go into design and turn that into um, a career of mine. So I started studying um, in Sydney and I, you know, left the band, started studying. And my first month, I felt pregnant. And I, that was very unplanned. Wow. And so I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Because I thought I was going to become a big hot shot interior designer in a firm. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to graduate with a one week old baby. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. Um, it turned my world upside. It, it turned my world upside down. Yeah, so like, I did that and I studied and um, I absolutely taught the class. I loved it because it's my passion and it's something that is, it's been part of my life like naturally and organically. So when yep. I actually studied it and learned those foundations, I really felt, and, um, but that was a decade ago. So um, when I graduated, I thought, what on earth am I going to do? Because we didn't have social media. We didn't have yeah. Pinterest or Instagram or any of those things of um, any form of marketing. And I thought, I can't get a job in a firm. What am I going to do? Um, <laughs> stop this little child. And so I started to check network. And something I've done very well since I was little is relationships, like build relationships and, and build great friendships. So I started to network with some people. And um, within a you know, couple of months, I was working for Better Homes and Gardens magazine, just interning. And then eventually I was getting paid. Um, and I just found ways to, to really make this, my dreams come true 
even with a child, I didn't let it stop me. I still kept going and um, continued to, to design and style. So I did that for a little bit. Then I um, moved back to the country when I was having a few issues with my child. And I, I, had some, I had a bit of a mental health journey as well where I got a bit of anxiety and depression with my uh, first child because yep. just being at home... Um, with my son screaming and then trying to work and it just felt quite overwhelming without any support. So I had to move back to Tamworth to get some support with that because yep. it was a challenging time. And anyone that's at, you know, at home with their children screaming a lot and that did have some sort of fun career or corporate career or whatever, a different lifestyle and then you go into motherhood and it's like, oh my God, I'm just trapped <laughs> with my child. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was very hard to take him anywhere because he just cried a lot. And um, so I really, yeah, I did. I struggled with that. And, mm. and I'm happy to openly talk about it now because I think back then I was very embarrassed and I felt like a bit of a failure to open up about postnatal depression and um, because mm. it was all a bit of a shock to me. And social media wasn't around. So there wasn't people sharing about it. And I'm a, you know, as a 25-year-old girl in the, the North Shore um, living in the North Shore where a lot of the mothers there were in their 30s to 35s and I just felt like quite isolated. Yeah, yeah, wow. Well, and and, 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 and so, tell, yeah. yeah, so so Crystal, I mean, I mean, it's interesting you say that because, Matt, Matty, you know, you, you, you're a CEO of a big agency. How many agents you have yeah. in your organisation? Just under 350. Under, under 350 and you've got a lot of ladies. That, yeah, you know, well, Crystal, I was just thinking as you were talking, um, you know, your story is interesting because having um you know been in a leadership role for 20 years a lot of my um a lot of the people i've worked with have been mums mums coming back into the industry mums young mums new you know with newborns some with teenage kids i find they've probably got one of the best followings in business because they you know everybody trusts the mum first of all <laughs> and the other thing Absolutely. is the other thing yeah. is they seem to be highly organized because you know, with kids, you just have to be, don't you? There's no, there's no choice yeah, sorry, to sort of. Yeah. They yeah. do not me, but no. <laughs> but they are, they are. They're, all, they're organised and they're multitaskers and they work hard because they know how to um, look after a family while working. Exactly. And it's something that you know we're very resilient when we're working. Mums, and but absolutely. Um, sometimes, you know, we don't have it all. We so, don't have it all together and we do need to put ourselves first because and, that's what I didn't do. Yeah, tell me. So, like, there were you sitting there going, oh, my gosh, my whole world's collapsed. I've got a, I'm pregnant. I've got a newborn coming. Where, where today you could probably turn that around and say, how exciting. That's a new network of mums groups. It's a network of um, different, uh, like, totally. trust, trusted advisors, families. So much of it. Is so that much right? Of it is mindset. Yeah. Definitely. So much of it is mindset. And I think what I, where I am leading to this is that we do have opportunities now to create businesses online because back then, a decade ago, we didn't have easy access to Instagram yeah. and Pinterest and Facebook and social media marketing. It was very much um, the traditional way. You know, I think we were doing letterbox drops. And, <laughs> and um, so I, I, I guess and, having... And mother's oh, groups and things, yeah. I guess having a child too helps you with interior design because you'd be really good with what would work with a family, what would work without a family having. And I think I never really became a really a, a good estate agent until I had kids because I didn't really understand what people would say. I want a yard with no steps. I want, you know, little Johnny to run out to the, you know, the, the side without the gate. And, you know, I want to be able to leave my little one in the car, sleep in the garage. You don't understand that, you know. <laughs> No, no, he hasn't got Johnny. Like, he hasn't got Johnny. Oh, no way. Johnny. <laughs> I was thinking that, Crystal. <laughs> well, I just picked a, you know, vanilla name. But, um, you know, I was just saying, so I guess with you, has that really helped you with interior design, having having a child? I have noticed, to be honest, a lot of mothers, when they do start to nest um, in their home, they really get, they really become more passionate about interiors. Totally. And so for me, Yes, when I was preparing, you know, for my child. And it was at a time when I was graduating from my design school. So I think hand in hand, it really um, made me even more passionate about design because I was messing and I was styling my house. And then I was like, hang on, I'm going to help other people style their houses. And it kind of just followed on with the relationships I was building um, with mums. And I was designing their houses. And I'm like, okay, this is this is definitely what I'm meant to be doing. And I'm really good at it. And I love it. And I, it makes me get out of bed and... It does, yeah, it does help. So wherever I've been, I've always come from a place of like service and collaboration. And so um, 
yeah, that's why for me it was my journey's been very organic and just stems purely from a lot of passion. Wow, that, that's amazing. And and I, I was just thinking about like you know how you've been running your business, Crystal, and obviously you know you travel the world and like you're saying you're at the best beach club in Bali at the moment. And obviously <laughs> one one of the biggest things of uh, you know if, if you could give some advice to say you know a real estate agent out there i mean you've got you know over thirty-seven thousand followers on instagram um how could someone build a following on instagram or how can someone you know build a, a tribe absolutely so i used to have two hundred thousand followers on my previous business called design team so after i um you know i moved back to town with i actually formed a business in my sink i came back to sydney a few months later because i couldn't stay in Tamworth and I, I called the design team and it, it, it became a multi-million dollar company with three retail stores and 200,000 followers. So how I grew that was I simply started to share the passion that made people feel something. And mm. I find very rarely on Instagram, I will get onto an account and I will feel within two scrolls what this person is about and that connection. Because humans thrive on connection. So when you actually go you know, into the neuroscience of our human behavior, when we see an account where we feel something, we're going to be more inclined to follow it because it's not a logical, strategized thought of that account. It's someone just, of course, is visual because we judge a book by its cover. So it also needs to have some sort of um, visual beauty because it's like we're not going to eat a burger that looks disgusting. We're going to eat a burger that looks beautiful. Um, and so I kind of go back to, hey, you really need to also, um, you know, have a consistent color palette. So I have an app called A Colour Story, and that makes it a really consistent colour palette. Um, and I think the important thing is engaging with others because it is called social media for a reason. And yes. so social media really recognises when people are actually being social as opposed to people that are just throwing this up because it's on sale or it's a, you know, sell, sell, sell. It's like people don't want to be sold to now. Um, and also it's not sometimes about... Um, it's not about what you say, it's how you make people feel. You so know, you know what? You, you've it's hit so true. It, it's yeah. so true, right, Matt? Uh, like, yeah. Crystal, you've, you've hit a really great point because what you're saying is, you know what? One of the things I, I tell like agents out there, and I coach a lot of them across the country, one thing is, you know, um, facts don't sell, but stories sell. And people can connect to a story. Stories do. Yeah. Yep. That, yep. That's yep. What, that's so the what, ones with big followers yeah. are, are great storytellers. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we've got our, our tech guy, um, our nerdy guy, uh, Clinton, who <laughs> wants to throw you a question. So, uh, Clinton, fire away, my friend. How you going, Crystal? Good. Never better. Never better. <laughs> That's good. That's really good. Um, so, 37,000 followers on Instagram. Can you talk me through a bit of the background of how you got started on Instagram, what kind of impact it's had, and the journey that you've been through to build uh, the business and your account? Yeah. Yep. Um, from what I heard there was just you wanted me to take you through the journey of how, like growing a following and starting off, you know, how I've grown that, that in one year. Yeah, so like day that one, following. day one to yep. now, because I think for a lot of people when they uh, yep. are trying to tackle this, it feels overwhelming. Yeah. Um, especially like, so I, I was talking to a client that I've had for three years now and he's only just gotten onto Instagram and I'm talking about TikTok and all these other things. His head spinning. <laughs> <laughs> so it spins. Yeah. You, you know, so like day one, what was that like? You know, then- yes, I just, yep, yep. It's about the culture creating, but honestly, the big reason I just started to gain followers was I consistently posted, you know, every day. It's something about being persistent, persistently and consistently leads to results, that leads to mastery. So if you can consistently post every day, um, you know, beautiful content or beautiful stories, like I actually have a social media marketing course that teaches you how to write copy um, and actually teaches you about this. But it is about also collaboration. And I was really, when I had no followers last year, I started off on one, which was my mom. And <laughs> I actually contacted a bunch of, I contacted a bunch of Instagram influencers and influential people. And I said, because my thing is only styling. And so last year when I actually walked away from my company without absolutely anything, I was like, I can do this again. I'm going to, you know, I lost my followers, my business, absolutely everything, my house, my car, my children. The whole thing just kind of made me realize exactly what's important in life. And I was like, God, it's not about the followers. It's about my relationships. So I contacted the people that I had relationships with from design teams. And I said, hey, can I actually come and style your office for free? And if you give me a few posts on social media because I know I can do a really amazing job and I know it's going to make you happy if you have this 
you know, very beautiful renovated office. So I'm like, okay, for sure. Or, hey, can I come over and um, sell you? So I worked with some, all of my um, clients in the last 12 months, you know, have had 200,000 to half a million followers. And wow. like one of my clients is born again, who has a million followers. And so um, I think I just really had a, um, I came from a place of service with people that have a big following that would, if there's, you know, there's something that they need and there's something that you can offer, it's a great collaboration because it's not about, hey, you've already got everything. It's like, no, they actually don't have a nice house. They don't have a nice lounge room and my genius is very styling. So I was like, hey, can I come over? So, um, you know, there's a girl called Not So Mumsy and she's got a beautiful audience like of mothers and I said, can I do your house, come over and sell your house, babe, and, um, and you know, can you post about it? Like, of course. Oh, my house is so boring, of course. So I, I did that and it got featured on the front cover of the door magazine. So I didn't actually realise some of these things would amount to that. This year I collaborated with Lisa Messenger on her um, a holiday house. It was quite a joke, actually. She invites me around for coffee and I'm like, oh, baby, house is pretty gross and we like to brighten it up. And she's like, yeah, God, I love that. So then um, we went off to Bunnings and... Came out and boutique shops, and then before we knew it, we had this amazing collaboration, and that got featured in her latest book, Work From Wherever. It was in the in the latest um, print magazine of Collective Hub, and you know, the collaborations actually ripple effects onto bigger things, but it's unintentional. It just was like very organic. Like, hey, your house is a bit dull. Can we kind of can we put some things in you to brighten it up? And and then they featured it on Instagram, and my followers are grow like you know that grew my followers. It also grew my um, content because content is king and so I have these beautiful images now of all of these houses and then I, I obviously have paid jobs so I balance you can't just do oh hang on sorry my earphones for you um you can't just do a whole bunch of collaborations it's not a business so you have to balance your marketing your collaborations with your actual um business and that's what you do charge so um it's all about you know leverage leveraging those influences with actual paying clients I, I think this is a really interesting point about leveraging, but if, if we relate the same thing to real estate agents, which is the majority of the audience listening to this, how do you think, and maybe Matt and um, Claudia, you guys can have a bit of input on this. Um, what I love about what you're saying, Crystal, is you're building your brand off the back of doing things for other people that have influence and yeah. have a following yeah. to leverage yeah. that and build your audience, which yeah. is cool point. Genius. It's, yeah. you know, if it's, for an agent yeah. starting out so or for a I, business starting out, it's, it's what they yeah. should be trying to do as well as build the business. Because mm. I think it marries together really nicely. So from an agent perspective, what do you guys think in terms of how you may start from day one? Well, um, Chris, delight, following on from what Clinton's saying is one of the challenges with a lot of the listeners is they go and do social media and they go and do networking and they come back and sort of in two months say it's not working. Yep. Um, how long before you... I think it's about, it's about storytelling from what I can feel from being... Because a real estate agent at the end of the day as well, like selling is about telling a story, yep. um, like beautiful storytelling, writing copy. And so um, if you're you know, telling a story about from a real estate point of view about the house or um, if you are working with an incredible client, like why not reach out to someone and yep. just kind of, um, you know, really go for it. Like don't hold back because at the end of the day, if you approach someone and they don't say, if they say, oh no, well, great. I'm, I said, but no, great. It's an answer. So, but I was um, going to ask you... For the outcome. Yeah, okay, that's really good. I was going to ask you how long before you... Like you, it sounds like you've done a lot of grinding away before you've actually got results initially. How long before social media and then a networking kicked in for you? I always give everything 90 days. So yeah, okay. I, I do 90 things called 90 day sprints. And whenever I start up any business, whatever it is, Instagram at the end of the day is a free marketing platform. Um, I do 90 day sprints. And so I go hard for 90 days on collaboration but also with um you know mixing it up so that's yeah. my that's my free marketing platform i'll go hard on that um for 90 days and then i'll analyze it at the end of the 90 days to go hey what's my result what have i gained yeah. what can i improve on and, and you, how best can i move you, forward did, did you get results after the 90 days oh yeah yeah, yeah okay <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, if it's, someone does invest into anything in any business if you're investing or marketing investing one hour a day solidly 
over a course of 90 days, that's 90 hours. That's great like, advice. You've actually formed yeah. a habit after 60, 60 hours of work anyway. So consistently one hour a day over 90 days will give anybody results in anything. Totally. Go to the gym for 90 days, one hour a day, yep. and send your body up for that. You know? Do the reps. Like, do the reps. Because <laughs> um, you... Yeah, for 90 days, and you will get results in anything. So if you're showing up for one hour a day on your Instagram, in your stories, providing great content, engaging with other people for 90 days, you will get results. Of course will. you will. Of course you will. You must see a lot of people to, give up after You've got to invest oh. that one hour a day. The, the, and, you know, you, half an hour a day, get up early in the morning or like half an hour at night when the kids are in bed into your marketing. Yep. And it will, like, sales, results, financial gain is, like, all of that is a result of you putting in that one hour a day. Yep. Um, and obviously, it's got to be great content. You've got to be able to tell a good story. So having... A bit of, um, you know, a bit of doing a bit of study yep. on how to tell stories yep. powerfully and make people feel something is good to actually have a foundation for first and learning how to, you know, capture beautiful photos. What are the best apps? Absolutely. And then if you, once you have that knowledge, one hour a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and you know, Crystal, it's, no, it, 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 I, I couldn't agree with you more. And, and that's the thing with the problem with real estate agents. They, they try it and they think just putting it just sold and it just listed in, and standing in front of a signboard is, 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 is going to get followers. I think you're abs- I think it, to me. You can't do that. No, no. You, you, know, you know what I said? I do time lapse videos of the houses. Like, take people through and give them an experience, for goodness sake. Like, do a time lapse video of the house, looking yeah. up the stairs. Download an app called InShot and Google how to use it because InShot. that is a free mm. app that is going to generate you a lot of money if you can learn how to harness this video making tool called InShot from your phone. I make um, YouTube videos from my phone now on this yep. and it's incredible. So do that and then it teaches you how to do slow mo and pan, you know, pan it in slow mo yeah. of the house and then have a time lapse walking up the stairs and then another pan, slow mo pan at the bedroom. And so you're taking them on that journey and they're going to go, oh, my God, I've got this feeling. It's a great feeling. Yeah. I'm going yeah, to you know, so I'm gonna look at this. I'm going to actually go look further, look further into it. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I couldn't, ag- I couldn't agree with you more, uh, Crystal. I think that that that's break that's... your photos up with your video. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I think uh, Clinton's just wants to uh, ask you one more thing. Oh no! Um... Yeah, no worries. Crystal's talking about you know doing video and things like that just to show evidence and and, and uh, we use great apps like InShot and, in, and basically mm. you know we like when I started yeah, out doing free apps, yeah. yeah so when I started out doing content I had um, an agent say to me look I haven't got time to film myself can you come out and do it and I started filming on a smartphone and for the first year of business everything was on a smartphone and then we graduated we got um, proper cameras and all that kind of stuff um, video content like is there something specific that you want to know about making video to m- to do better with it or what What are you sort of thinking? Uh, what, how I start a video, um, I, I just, it's a little bit quiet so I'm just going to um, interpret uh, unless someone wants else to, um, you know, just reiterate what you said but video content's about, you know, first you started off by like, hi, my name is Glenn and I'm going to be taking you through um, lot blah, blah, blah and then you, um, so you do that, that's your first video and then you actually like, you know, film walking into the door and then you would maybe cut do that one little video, like these are just snippets, I would say, and then you do another snippet of a slow-mo, then pan across the room, and then you would do a little fast forward of walking around into another room, and then a slow-mo, and then, um, you know, and then maybe you could, because in InShot, the teachers who even had to do a little voiceover, so you could say, you know, there is so much natural light in this space, it is so beautiful, or um, three bedrooms, four bathrooms, and then once you finish it off, say, um, you know, get in touch with me if you like to check it out. This is a beautiful family home. Blah blah. Thanks for watching. Or I don't know, it could be that. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. Now, agree. I th- Instagram. Yeah, I th- I think with smartphones these days, there's, there's no excuse for um, an agent or any business to not be able to make a video. 100%. So, yeah, you're 100% spot on. It's a I think. little bit quiet, so I'm just trying to um, make out what you're saying. So, if someone else could help um, say that, or just if you could say it a bit is louder, my headphones just aren't. Is that better? Yeah, that is a bit better. Yeah, yep. excellent. Yeah, 100% agree. I think if, if somebody wants to start making content, then pick up your smartphone and start using that. InShot app sounds like a great idea, um, but the general gist of oh, I think... Honestly, say, yeah. If yeah. you use your smartphone, they're so amazing now. Like, we don't need to buy the cameras and then try and edit that because it's just too much work. And if, we do, if it takes too much work, it's snackable content. People are like, they're scrolling fast. Like, it's not a case of... You know, you need to have the drones and the um, and the, the high tech cameras. You can just you, 
it's how you're making them feel. So if you're taking them through and like, yeah, you can make them feel funny. And it's practice, you know, for me showing up on camera, it took me a couple of months of just keep going. Like, you know, if I was part of my one hour a day, 90 day sprint, you can do that, you know, every 90 days, you'd be amazing on camera. So a lot of people don't have self-confidence. It is a mindset thing, which is like, I used to think personally my voice was really annoying and I actually didn't like talking on camera. But I just have to get over myself and I'm like, look, at the end of the day, this is like, I know this is an amazing place. I'm going to just show- showcase it from my heart. Yeah. And it's you, right? So that's what it comes down to. Hey, Yeah. And you just kind of, you have the facts when you're selling your house. You know it's three bedrooms. You know it's two bathrooms. You know that there's a garage. And so it's like, you're not just making stuff up. You can actually, you know, you're just sharing the facts about the place and how amazing it is. Exactly, exactly. So, hey, Crystal, um, we've just gone, oh, my God, we've got another guest coming on. <laughs> and, and we're going, we're, we're just having so much fun with you just chatting away. And uh, I'm sure you probably need to top up on your suntan there in Bali while you're over there. So, <laughs> But you've been absolute. Time for a cocktail, yeah. Oh, and buy your cocktail, of course. Um, uh, I'm, but honestly, I do want to talk about that, the power of social media. Like, it is so, such an incredible platform that you – if you're investing one hour a day over 90 days, you will have results. And it is so powerful for your business. I think it's the best foundation for anybody to use. It's global. It's free. We can reach anybody, anywhere, at any time for absolutely no money. And so everybody should really harness the power of your business. Yeah, absolutely, Crystal. Couldn't, couldn't agree with you more. Hey, uh, Crystal, um, we've really enjoyed your time and, and we appreciate you taking time out of your day um, while you're overseas right now. And uh, from all of us here at The Mentors, um, hey, high five. Thanks so much for being part of The, the Mentor Show. If you want to get a hold of Crystal, check her out on Instagram, Crystal Bailey and Co. Um, I love watching your stories. I love watching the stuff that you post on Instagram. Um, you've got me hooked and I'm sure you'll probably get some more followers after they listen to this amazing interview of what, you, what you've done and what you're doing. Like, <laughs> so, I love Gary V, and so I'm like, you know, he talks about having depth rather than just width. Yep. Sometimes it's not about your following, it's just about how much value you're providing and, and so, you know, if you have your value, especially when it comes to real estate, people would love to know some top tips, top threes yep. and then it's, it's about giving yourself some depth. So, um, thanks so much, guys. Really appreciate it. That's Crystal, great. Good thanks on so you, much. Crystal, all thanks for joining us, and we'll catch you next time on the the mentors. Thanks so much. Have a great time in Bali. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Got something great from this episode? It would mean the world to us if you passed it on. Tune in each week as we mentor a new agent. Have a question? Want to be on the show? Get in touch with Claudio Encina, Matt LaHood, or visit our Facebook page. The Mentors is brought to you by Sprinkler.media.